Uh, you know, one question I had, this is kind of off the subject, because of course the movie... Please is, get off the subject, that's fine with me. The movie might be good for small kids, and that's about it. Okay. To what degree is Herbie intelligent? Because now his uh, bumper droops, and his eyes wink, and his doors open on command, and he falls in love with that little yellow right. Volkswagen. Right. And I wonder what kind of sex they would have. Uh, um... Nintendo fans are going to be as disappointed as everyone else. Now, what do I know about Nintendo? Very little. But I know this. I once got to the second level of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And so in this movie, when they talk about, hey, I got to the third level, and they show the screen, even dummy like me, I know enough that they only got to the first level. So any kid is going to say, this movie doesn't know what it's talking about. That's not the third level of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you got to get stuff like that right in movies like this. There's an easier way to check it. I think they say the second level, and it was very easy. I looked in the lower left-hand corner of the screen at that point, and the score was only at 300, jumped to 500, so uh -huh. the game had uh -huh. just started. So they made that mistake, too. Yeah. There's one scene where they're in Venice, and there's a car chase, and the car is racing through the streets of Venice. Yeah. And the problem with that is there aren't any streets in Venice that would go <laughs> directly into a canal or crash into a bridge. This was almost a landmark for me in the five years I've been co-hosting the show. This is the closest I've ever come to walking out halfway through the film. And now that I look back on the experience, I wish I had. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Black Sheep is awful. Uh, I have a confession to make. This is the first movie that I have ever walked out on in a theater. Mm -hmm. In 26 years. I envy you. I envy you. I cut out after 20, with 20 minutes to go. Uh -huh. I pretended like I had to go to the bathroom so the people, you know, I, and I came back in again uh -huh. so they think I went to the bathroom and then I went out again. <laughs> I was trying to fake out in case people, because we should never do this. Yeah. I left It's okay to do it if you say you did it. I did, that's why I have to okay. say it. I did it with Million Dollar Duck in 1969. Yeah. This stunk. This is such a stupid movie yes. and I really detested the whole idea that Somehow, if there, are, if there is a universe where dogs are smart and they can talk and they can, I guess, travel through space and all this kind of stuff, that they would prefer to be slaves. They'd prefer to yeah. have collars around them and be yanked around and be mute because somehow that's a preferable life. That's basically the message of this terrible, terrible movie. You know, the French girls, they have a very thankless role in the film. Right. They meet them. They get to live in their tents at the airfield. The yeah. Commandant's pretty understandable. There's no sex in this film, And then frankly. they spend, no, no, there's no sex at all. And then they spend the whole movie on the ground looking up at the sky for their returning masters. Now, in the Battle of Britain, right. a movie made in 1969, their roles were played by a dog. That's right. Better. <laughs> Thought she was dead. For a while. For a while. And I'm back. Now, he's supposed to be a Russian, but could you hear an accent there? I don't think I could. I didn't even hear him trying to have a Russian accent. Well, the obvious joke is Half Past Dead would be a documentary about Steven Seagal's career, and that might be more interesting. You know, when did he become Jim Belushi? He now looks like Jim Belushi. He was supposed to be this action star. And if you're, if you're Steven Seagal, you got a lot of free time. Get a good haircut, lose some weight, and take some acting lessons yeah, if you're going to get another movie. Ellen Brody is a widow. Roy Scheider's character has died, meaning Scheider has enough sense to know when to stop bilking the public. And his wife in the film is convinced that a great white shark has a grudge against her family. Now, you can just hear those sharks talking. I'm going to get me a Brody if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> I guess that's what they very, say. Very realistic. Thank shark you. talk. There I know. Else. The Wayans family has produced some funny movies, but White Chicks is not one of them. If we don't agree on this one, I'll be amazed. Every 23 years, for 23 days, it gets to eat. It has it easy. Every two years, we have to see a movie about it. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, they say every 23 years, yeah. it gets to eat. No, well, who decides that it gets to eat? Like and how do they know that? There must be a commissioner of yeah. Creepers who says, okay, every 23 years, you get to eat. So, I mean, we have to have a little bit invested in knowing who this villain is. What about those guys who look up <laughs> through the hole in the top of the bus to see if yeah, still that's always there. a good idea, too. If yeah. a lot of your friends are being picked off, put your head through the <laughs> hole so that your head can go off as well. <laughs> of the shark isn't even set up well. There's a key shot missing so that we don't even get the whole picture. We walk out of the theater very frustrated. And that last scene is preceded by one of the most glaring errors in recent movie history. Michael Caine has been in the water, has swim to safety onto the boat, but in the very next scene, his shirt is as dry as if it had just been freshly laundered. Let's hope this is the end of the Jaws series. The first film was thrilling and well acted, 
The rest have been trash. It's not even the next shot. Michael Caine actually comes over the rail out of the water right. and he's totally dry. I, I was sitting in the theater and I said, his shirt is dry. I know. The preview audience uh, Laugh. appreciated that. You know, I always hate it when people talk during the movies, but I don't know. That seemed to go over pretty well. Yeah. You know, I got a question for you. I go may ahead. be very badly confused here. In this, I you, you know usually am. In this movie, yeah. this shark wants revenge against the Brody family. You got it. Yes. Okay. Now, in the first movie, what happened to the shark in the first movie? Dead. Blown to pieces, right? Yeah. What happened to the shark in the second movie? I know, dead. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. What happened to the shark in they the third movie? They all die. They all die. So in that case, their family. What shark is this? A friend of the other shark. Is this like a cousin, a nephew? You got it. As far as Jessica Simpson goes, it's almost like she's from like another planet. She's so. Bad. She's so unwatchable. It's the Did worst. Did you get the acting. impression that her role must have been diminished? I mean, all the publicity indicates she's kind of like the yeah. third co-star, and she's in the movie very little time. I swear, it seems like English is a second language for her. You know, I never. I sat there patiently and right. passively, and the time went past, and eventually the movie was over, <laughs> and it was a large <laughs> dead zone. Nothing happened. Undercover Brother, I thought, was just too timid. Instead of packing an R-rated, politically incorrect punch, the film kind of goes for the easy laughs and doesn't want to get too raunchy or too violent. And the result is mildly amusing, but mostly mediocre. And for the record, I hate mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. Just nothing like a little mayonnaise on it. Nice <laughs> BLT. Now, <laughs> this is probably one of the worst movies ever made about Hollywood, because that's what it should yeah. be about, is... These uh, out of fish characters are out of out water. Of, out, out of water fish. You got it. Or out of fish water. She's the Man is just another uninspired comedy with a tired premise, a bland leading teen queen, and far too many attempts at shtick that just fall flat. Big thumbs down. I hope you're sitting down. Oh, I Big see you are sitting down. down because I'm going to vote thumbs up on this film. I liked it. I liked it. Sitting I liked down. it. You did I thought, not. I thought it was the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, and to my surprise, and probably yours, I really liked this movie. <laughs> In the thumbs up, and the people who made Nacho Libre could only have wished that you laughed as much during that movie as you did during my review oh, oh man. of this movie. All right, come on, I'm being punked, right? This, now let's do your real review. You're really giving this movie this piece of this junk, this piece of garbage. Let me tell you. Now, how did they win the trip to the Bahamas? On a radio station contest where they said Rio was the capital of Brazil. Well, that's the wrong answer. The answer is Brasilia, and the contest is a phony. But frankly, I was surprised these characters even knew Brazil was a country. I still know what you did last summer is a deadening series of setups and slashings, setups and slashings, setups and slashings, and for its viewers, it's a waste of 90 precious minutes that they can never get back. Just think, Gene, that's three hours between the two of us, right. and if you multiply that by thousands of people who will see this movie, it adds up to months, years even centuries lost forever to the human race. Yes, uh, how if we'd all pulled together, we could have solved some very big problems. We could have gone to a disaster site and, you know, put sandbags by a, uh, we could have, a, a raging dam. That's right, we could have stopped flooding. We could have yes. tutored kids who learn, uh, want to learn how to read. Maybe have a used clothing drive or something. <laughs> think, yeah. of the th oh. think of the hours of volunteer labor that this movie has taken out of the human time pool. Shocking. I'm going to go home and just cry. <laughs> I think I'm going to start crying right now. Performances are awful. The first 30 seconds of the movie were funny when they reveal that the wow. SAT test has secret questions to figure out which students would lie, cheat, steal, and kill. I think that's kind of an interesting angle. The first angle, 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. The wow. first 30 seconds. <laughs> that's then, like saying the napkin's then, good in a bad yeah, restaurant. Listen, and then, you know? <laughs> then that's very good. I have to admit, I didn't hate this Garfield as much as the first Garfield. It's harmless. It's forgettable. It's inoffensive. I guess it might keep kids occupied on a winter afternoon when it comes out on DVD. For now, though, thumbs down. I agree with you uh, that it is a better movie than the original Garfield, so I like it even more. And kids oh my God. at home, kids, you know, uh, the, the smaller kids. Uh, Your Uncle Richard here, he's an old, old man. He's very old and doesn't understand. I'm a hipster uh, who knows what's right for the kids. A comedy about cats and Garfield. And so just listen to me because it's real funny because the... The way that Garfield gets to England is interesting, and then it turns out that he's mistaken right. for this rich cat who runs an entire castle, and the two of them change places, kind of like the prince and the pauper, and they solve each other's problems. And it's all very cute, and you're going to like it, and so now we can go back to Uncle Richard. Hello, Uncle Well, Richard. I am so glad that you like Garfield and the Fast and the Furious, the mm -hmm. sequels to mm -hmm. Garfield, and the third entry eternally, in the Fast and the Furious. Eternally young, that's me. Wow. Yes.